this first message I want to speak about family, a tool in the hand of God. God gave me three different expressions about family. I don't want you to see family as a cultural thing. It is an error. Family does not start with tradition. Family does not start with culture. Family does not begin with environment. <clears throat> family started with God. God is the originator of family. Did you hear that now? God is what? The originator of family. Family is the idea of God. It's not the idea of culture. It is a mistake today. What belongs to God, the devil has taken it over through culture. Through tradition. You discover that most people today, when they hear family, it's their heart will go to culture. Their heart will go to tradition. This is how family should be. No. It is God that originated family. And any time you hear family, let your heart go back to God. It is God that has the authority to say this is how family should look like. And until your family is looking like God wants it to be, that family is not yet successful. Don't let us rule our family with culture. Let us rule our family with the word of God. Because culture is not the beginning of your family. The word of God, God himself is the beginning of family. Do you agree with me? If you read the book of Genesis, you will see how God started with family. And it is because family, God is looking at family as a tool that he can use. Number one, I want you to write this down. Family is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. Don't forget that. Family is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. When God wanted to start his work on the earth, he had a plan. And that plan is family. God always operates on the earth through families. If you look at Genesis chapter 2, you notice how, how God created Adam and all that. But if you look at verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. That is God starting family. Yes or no? Most of the time, they preach it in marriage, but during marriage uh, service, most people don't understand it. And especially the, whole, the couple that are getting married, their heart is at the reception. So there is nothing you are going to say that they will hear you. And all the husband's family, the wife's family, their heart is not in church. They're thinking of the, the reception party. But in this family redemption and renewal service, let it register in your mind that God started family. Did you hear me? And God has a purpose. And verse 19, and out of the ground of and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cartoons and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, <coughs> there was not found and held meat for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. And what brought her unto the man? And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones, the, the 
flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. You see how family began in God. Are you with me now? So family is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. Okay? Family is God. God has an operation he wants to have on the earth. So family is his original plan. That I'm going to use family for my operation on the earth. I'm going to use family as a tool to operate on the earth. It doesn't matter what is happening today. That is the original plan of God. Family is a divine. When God started the world, government was not in view. I get what I'm saying now. Family was in view. Family. So family is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose progressively from generation to generation. Family is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose progressively from generation to generation. So family is a tool in the hand of God. God uses family to move his purpose progressively from generation to generation. So family is a divine joker. Nobody has known what God can do through a family that is submitted to the plan and the purpose of God. You have heard of God of Abraham. You have heard of God of Isaac. You have heard of God of Jacob. He's the same God that is progressively moving his purpose from generation to generation through family. Did you get that? God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, that is the same God who is moving his purpose progressively from generation to generation through what? Through family. Through family. So family is not just a means to satisfy our carnal lust and ego. But a tool in the hand of God. Family is a tool in the hand of God. Say after me, my family is a tool in the hand of God. A tool in God's hand to fulfill his purpose. Now, a tool is in God's hand to do two things. I want you to take note of that. Number one, to fulfill his purpose. Number two, to transfer his purpose. A tool in God's hand, one, to fulfill his purpose. Number two, to transfer his purpose. When I talk of transfer, I mean perpetuate his purpose. From generation to generation. So that is number one definition of family. It is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. It is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose progressively from generation to generation. It's not just a, re a means to satisfy our carnal lust and ego, but a tool in God's hand to fulfill his purpose, to transfer or perpetuate his purpose from generation to generation. That is family. In the view of God. And God's view is the correct view. Because he is the originator of family. He started it all. It is not Adam that said, I want to have a wife. Adam did not even know what a wife means. Adam is not even aware of his need. But God that made him knew that he needed a helper suitable for him and God brought the helper God made the helper brought it to Adam and then when it comes to and God blessed them and they become a tool in the hand of God are you hearing me now so God started with family the world with family I'm sure he's going to end the world also with family but this time around a spiritual family when Jesus appear and the saints are raptured and those who are dead in Christ will rise up 
and we meet in the sky. Again, it is one family. Did you hear me now? God began creation with family. He's going to end creation with family. Family has always been in the heart of God. Whenever he's thinking of his operation on the earth. Did you hear what I'm saying now? So the, the man is a workman in the hand of God. The woman is a workman in the hand of God. The children are workmen in the hand of God. Family is, a, is employed divinely by God to fulfill his purpose on the earth and to transfer that purpose from generation to generation. Is somebody hearing me this morning? That is God's purpose for your family. And it's very important that we take note of that. Number two, family is the means through which God ensures man's blessing. When God wants to bless a man, he gives him a family. When God wants to bless a man, when God wants to increase a man, he gives him a what? Family. So family is the means through which God ensures man's blessing. That's number one. There are many things God ensures through family. I mentioned six here. I will mention six here. Are you following me now? There are many things that God ensures for man through family. And there are these things that I want to mention. They are things that will never come to man except through family. Because that is how God has ordained. Alright? So family is the means through which God ensures, number one, man's blessing. Number two, man's fruitfulness. Man's fruitfulness. Number three, man's multiplication. Man's multiplication. Family is the means through which God ensures that man multiply. Number four, man's replenishing. Man replenishing. Man replenishing. Okay? And then number five, man's dominion. Man's dominion. Man cannot dominate without family. Man cannot dominate on the earth without the agency of family. And number six, man's victory on the earth. Man's victory on the earth. I want you to, one of the things that the Holy Spirit is doing is for you to begin to see family the way God is seeing family. God wants you to begin to see your family today the way God is seeing family. So that you and God can be on the same page. And when that happens, when you have a revelation of what your family is in the presence of God, the devil can no longer defeat you again. Because you are never going to give the devil an opportunity to destroy your family. Most of the reason why we fail is not because of what we know. It's most of the time because of what we do not know. Are you hearing me now? When a man does not have the revelation of God about his family, when we don't have the revelation of God about her family, she behaves carelessly. She cannot walk in alliance with God. Are you following what I'm saying now? And you discover that the man and the woman most of the time will be a tool in the hand of the devil to destroy their family because they don't have a revelation of what that family is in the sight of God. That's the revelation that God is bringing this morning. And your situation, condition will not change until your revelation changes. When you and God are seeing the family the same way, or oh, definitely you are going to begin to walk in alignment with God. And you are going to stand against the oppression and the deception of the devil. Most people in the world don't see family this way. Oh. 
That's why family is scattering. We have men of God. We have pastors that don't see family the way God sees. That's why their family is scattering. Are you following what I'm saying? Did you get what I'm saying now? So family is the means through which God ensures one man's blessing. Fruitfulness. When you know that you can, you, as, a, as a man, you cannot be blessed except through family. When I'm talking of blessing, I'm not talking of the blessing of money. Money is a manifestation of spiritual blessing. Money is a manifestation of spiritual blessing. Money is not the blessing. It's the product of the blessing. Money is not the blessing. Is there anybody that has a cash? Bring cash out. Bring cash. You have cash? Bring it out. Just bring your cash. Bring it out. Whatever. 100 naira, 200 naira, whatever. Just bring it out. Let me see. Let me see the cash. Okay? Okay. Now, this is cash. This is 1,000. It, you will be foolish if you think that this is the blessings of God. I read about how they produce cash in different countries. Listen to me. I read a lot of things. So. I discovered that almost all the countries of the world, the paper they use to produce their currency is not the paper of the highest grade. The paper they use to print books are better in grade than the paper they use to print money. Did you hear that? That's my latest discovery. And that does not only affect Nigeria alone, it affects every country in the world. They use paper of the least grade to produce their currency. Hello? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Cash is just paper. What did I say? It's paper. If you see this as the blessing of God, you will be the greatest fool. And this is what people are pursuing. And they will never get enough of this. This is not the blessing of God. This is not wealth. Did you hear? This is not the blessing of God at all. Dollar is not the blessing of God. Pound sterling is not the blessing of God. Euro is not the blessing of God. Naira is not the blessing of God. The blessing of God is spiritual in nature. Are you hearing me now? If you don't have the blessing of God, you will not have the cash. If you are looking for the cash, without the blessing and the favor of God, you will never have the cash. The Bible says, it is your God that giveth the power to do what? To get wealth. Bring up Deuteronomy 8.18 for me. Are you following what I'm saying now? Because that's the reason many, the, what, the only thing that some people are using their life to pursue is this. That's the reason why some people find it very difficult to give God. Because this to them is ah. This is not the blessing of God. Deuteronomy 8.18 Can somebody read it for me or bring it on the screen for me? It is, it is that give it the power to wealth, to, to have wealth. Okay. But thou shalt do what? Remember who? May you not forget God. Because once you forget God, you can as well forget his blessing. That thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is what? He that what? Give it the power to do what? To get well. So the power there is the spiritual factor. The blessing factor. 
to get wealth. If he doesn't give you that power, you can't have the wealth. That he may establish his covenant which is sworn to thy father as it is this day. Okay? So this is not the blessing of God. How many of you have heard when the Bible says, because if you are pursuing this, if this is what you pursue with your life, you are going to have many sorrows. Yes or no? You are going to have many sorrows. You are going to have many heartbreaks. And the Bible says, it is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich. And what? And added no sorrow. It is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and added no sorrow. I think Proverbs 10.22, I don't know, 10.22 or 27. It should be either 22. It is the blessing of God that maketh rich. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So real blessing, the, 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 the blessing of God is not cash. As a matter of fact, cash is the lowest in the ladder of blessing. The lowest. But we live in a world today that anybody that has cash, everybody believes he has everything. No. Look for the blessing of God. Look for the favor of God. When you carry the favor of God upon your life, you are going to have money. Money will be running after you. When you carry the blessing of God, money will run after you. Is that okay? Okay, come and take it back. Praise God. Now, that's not what I'm dealing with. I'm talking about family as the means through which God ensures man's blessing. When you know that family is a means by which God can ensure your blessing, you won't want to cooperate with the devil to destroy your family. Because destroying your family, what does that mean? What does it mean now? You are destroying your blessing. I love somebody. Did you get what I'm saying now? Praise God. Family is the means by which God ensures man's what? Blessing. How many of you want blessing? God is going to ensure your blessing through the family. And if you know that, you will not cooperate with the devil to that family. Because that will amount to destroy your blessing. Family is the means through which God ensures man's fruitfulness. Somebody say fruitfulness. Family is the means through which God ensures man's multiplication. How many of you want to multiply? Family is the tool of God for that. Family is the tool of God for fruitfulness. Family is the tool of God for replenishing. To replenish on the earth. Replenish on the earth. Replenish on the earth. Family is the tool of God for dominion. To dominate. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Family is the tool of God for victory on the earth. Look at Genesis chapter 1. I'm reading verses 27 and 28. Genesis chapter 1. I read verses 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Look at verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be what? Be fruitful, you see now, and what? And multiply, and what? And replenish the earth, and what? And subdue it, and what? And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That is number two definition of family, as far as God is concerned. Did you get it now? Number three. Family is the means through which God intends to raise and perpetuate godly seed from generation to generation. Family is the means through which God intends to raise and perpetuate godly seeds from generation to generation. Right? So that's why I say family is the tool in the hand of God. Through family, God intends to raise and perpetuate godly seeds from generation to generation. Somebody say godly seed. Say godly seed. Good. There's a difference between just having children from your children becoming godly seed. You always plant seed. 
And as long as there is seed, the harvest can never be stopped. How many of you know? How many of you know? The Bible spoke about a man that is crying and is going on. But he has precious seed in his hand. In a matter of time, he will come back with joy, bringing in the chiefs. Can you get that from that place for me in the Bible? Amen. A man that is going and crying, but is bearing what? Precious seeds in his hand. You are not hopeless until you are seedless. When you have a seed, you have a future. When you have a seed, the devil can't stop your future. Is somebody here know what I'm saying now? When a man is going home, going, and then he's bearing precious seed in his hand, the Bible says he will come back again, bringing chiefs with joy, bringing chiefs in his hand. All right? Look at Psalm 126. He that goeth forth and what? And weepeth. Did you hear me? Weeping there means there is a situation of sorrow. There is a situation that is unpalatable. Things are not really good. So he goes about and is weeping. But in his cry, in his sorrow, in his unpalatable, he has what? Precious seed. Bearing precious seed. Shall what? Doubtless. I want you to underline the word doubtless. What is the meaning of doubtless? Certainly. So weeping is a matter of time. So doubtless come again with what? Rejoicing. Bringing what? His chiefs with him. So let your family be the tool of God to raise godly seeds. Did you hear me now? Let your family be the tool of God to do what? To raise godly seed. Godly seed. Godly seed. When your seed are godly, your future is guaranteed. That's why I look at people that just handle their children anyhow as the greatest enemy of their own future. Either it's a man or a woman that just handle the children anyhow is the greatest enemy of his own future. Are you hearing me now? Listen to me. Money means nothing if you are not investing it in something that will guarantee the future. And one of the things you can invest your money in is the training of your children. Do you get what I'm saying now? You may not have too many clothes today. It's not about impressing people. It's about building the next generation. Okay? In fact, there are some things that I'm reserving by the Holy Spirit direction for October Covenant Month. We're still going to have a family corner in the October Covenant Month. I hope you've started praying for that. Because we are closer to it now. This is August. We have only September in between. That one is 31 days. Every day. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Family is the means through which God intends to raise godly seed and perpetuate godly seed from generation to generation. God wants to use your family to raise godly seed. Not only raising godly seed, perpetuate them from where? From generation to generation. Listen to me. The way you handle your children today is the picture of the future you are looking to. If you allow your children to roam the streets today, they are free to do whatever they like. They are free to get into any kind of foolish friendship they can get into. You are not getting involved in their life. You seem to like money more than their, your children. You are destroying your own future. I, I like one of the Yoruba proverbs. He said, the, the, the child that is not built is the one that will sell the house that is built. Yes or no? 
God wants to use your family. Your family is a tool in the hand of God. When you and your wife, you and your husband come together, God raise a family. And that family is an instrument in the hand of God. To do what? To raise godly seed and perpetuate godly seed from what? From generation to generation. Hello? That's family as far as God is concerned. That you yourself, you will be godly. And then you will raise godly seed. And the godly seed that are raised today will raise godly seed tomorrow. And godly seed will become a perpetuation from generation to generation. That's the plan of God. Hello, somebody. How many of you understand that? This is what secure and guarantee continuity. This is what secure and guarantee continuity. I want you to take note of this. When you are raising godly seed, that is what secure and guarantee continuity. And take note of this. Godly seeds are your weapons of war against the enemies. Godly seeds are your weapons of war against the enemies. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now I'm going to show you a scripture because since God showed me that scripture and gave me a revelation of that scripture, my philosophy for church changed from that day. My philosophy for church changed. From that day, I am not raising members. I am raising sons and daughters. And any of you that follow me very well should be able to know when that, that approach, when my philosophy, church philosophy changes. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? Any of you that have stayed long in this church must be able to know when my philosophy, my approach to church changes from raising just members to raising sons and what? And daughters. Some of you must be able to know that time. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And it is this scripture that God gave me. Godly seeds are your weapons of enemies. Psalm 127. Godly seed are your weapons. How many of you want to overcome your enemy? Are you sure? Raise godly seed. What did I say? Raise godly seed. If you don't raise godly seed in your family, you have lost to the enemy permanently. Did you hear? Did you get what I'm saying? If you don't raise godly seed, the enemy has succeeded in defeating you permanently. Godly seed are your weapons of war against the enemies. And I took that philosophy to church work. That no, I'm, from, I'm not going to, as from today, I'm not going to be raising members. I'm not just going to raise, I'm going to begin to raise sons and what? And daughters. Sons and daughters. So that is when my emphasis on sonship and all that begin to come up. Psalm 127. I start to read from verse 3. Lo, children are what? An heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Look at verse 4. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are what? Are the children of the youth. What is happening to the man? Happy. Look at verse 5. Happy is the man. Did you see that? That has his quiver. What? Full of them. What will happen? They shall not be ashamed. But they shall what? Speak with the enemies in the gate. The word speak there means they will contend with the enemies. 
they will overcome the enemies in the gate. The gate is not, the gate is a place of spiritual power. The gate is a place of authority. It's not the gate of your household. Are you hearing me now? The gate is the center of authority. Where the leaders of the city sit down to take decision. That's why the Bible says, lift up your heads. O ye gate. Aso Rock is a gate in Nigeria. Are you hearing me now? Because it's a center and a seat of authority. So the Bible says, the children will do what? We contend with the enemies in the gate. Are you with me now? From that day when God showed me, God said, begin to release sons and daughters. Members will come and go. Sons and daughters have a permanent attachment to their house. Yes or no? Members will come and go. But sons and daughters, sons of the kingdom, sons of the calling, they have a permanent attachment. And they are the weapon against the enemy. Sons are the weapons against the enemy. Daughters are the weapons against the enemy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. So the same thing now. If as a father, or as a mother, you are not raising godly seed, you are going to lose your battle. There are places now that my father doesn't need to go. Once I show up there, I will deliver his message. Yes or no? So what am I? An instrument. Hello? You do hear? If I show up, will they say they don't see human being? Anybody that sees me and they say doesn't see human being, I think he's blind. Did you hear what I just said? What if I'm smoking in their home around town? I will, by today, I will be a pain in his heart. Yes or no? I will be a shame to him. It will be mourning his demise even before he leaves. Are you hearing me now? Did you hear what I'm saying now? Tell somebody, raise godly seeds. Listen to me. When I talk of godly seed, it doesn't have to mean that the children that you gave back to biologically. Are Anybody that you are a father figure to or a mother figure to, as long as they are your control, raise them to become what? Godly seed. That is your joker to defeat the enemy forever. Did you hear what I'm saying now? That's your what? Your joker to defeat the enemy forever. That is your joker to defeat the enemy forever. If you don't raise godly seed, your defeat of the devil is momentary. In your old age, it will finish you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So do everything possible to raise godly seed because that is what God wants to achieve by family. And do you know what? These three basic reasons, these three basic definitions of family that I gave this morning, are the three major reasons why the devil is waging war against the family constantly. Constantly. Devil is, how many of you know the devil is fighting against the family? How many of you know the devil doesn't like family? Anywhere in the world. You see how family are scattering, how children are becoming terrible things. The husband will go away, the mother will go his own way. It is because of what God wants to achieve through the family. And if, if, the, if, if the devil did not rise up and God achieved all that, the, the, the oppression of the devil will be ended completely on the earth. That's why the devil is fighting your family. And they, they must be the reason why you, should, you must rise up and protect your family. They must be the reason why you must rise up and, and cooperate with God to protect your family. I want to pray for you 
that the battle over your family, you will not lose it. You will not lose it. You will win it. Listen to me. Anywhere the father is better than the son, the battle is lost. Son must always be better than the father. Did you hear me now? Did you hear what I say now? Anywhere the father is better than the son, the battle is lost. The future is not guaranteed. There is, there is going to be weakness in the future when the father is better than the son. There is going to be a compromised future. There is going to be weakness in the future. But when the son becomes stronger than his father, the future will be more glorious. How many of you understand that language? The future will be more secure. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Stronger in the sense of either spiritually, physically, academically, financially, character-wise, the son must be stronger. So that the future can be guaranteed. Otherwise, the future will be getting reduced, 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 until there is no future again. I want to pray for you that your children will be better than you. That your sons and daughters will be better than you. And if that is your goal, it must be reflected in how you handle them today. Did you hear me now? It must be reflected now you handle them today. And you must now understand why I am pastoring the way I'm pastoring. Because I am not raising members. I am raising what? Sons and daughters. I'm raising people that I believe should be stronger than me. That's why it looks as if the standard is high. And that's why it looks as if few people are surviving. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Any father that reduces the standard has destroyed the future. Any mother that reduces the standard for the children has destroyed the future. We must raise the standard and challenge our children to rise to that standard. And then the future can be what? Can be guaranteed. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. I want to pray for you that there will be no weakness in your future. So let me ask this critical question as I round up this first teaching. Number one, where is your family involved in the purpose of God on the earth? Where is your family involved in the purpose of God on the earth? As you are seated, I want you to ask yourself, where is your family involved in the purpose of God on the earth? Purpose of God on the earth is what God is doing on the earth. Where is your family involved in that purpose? What connection does your family have with the purpose of God on the earth? What connection, direct or indirect, that your family has with what God is doing on the earth? Are you hearing me now? All of us cannot be pastors. If you are not a pastor, you have a church. You have where you are going. What connection is your family having with the purpose of God? Because if your family doesn't have a connection with the purpose of God, somewhere, somehow, that is a family that will not become what God wanted to become. That is a family that is not a tool in the hand of God. And when the family is not a tool in the hand of God, it will be a tool in the hand of the devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. I tell people in the church, not today, over the years, I tell fathers and mothers, when your children are involved in the work of God in the church, don't ever discourage them to pull out. Don't say anything that will make your children pull out. Hello, somebody. Don't disturb them. Don't, don't say pastor has stolen them. No pastor can steal your children. It is a sign of insecurity. No pastor can steal your children. There is no child here that uh, 
Uh, there is no child there that is bearing my son name except my biological children. I love somebody. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Do you know the reason why I'm saying that? For example, maybe your, your son is a chorister. You may not know that the blessing of God is upon your family because your son is partaking in the purpose of God. That may be the reason why God is going to protect your family. That may be the reason why God is going to fight for the entire family. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Did you hear what I just said? I had the opportunity to tell my family, my siblings, see me as a donation of God, as your own donation to God. And I tell them, none of you should rise against my ministry because that will be the beginning of your downfall. Because I am in this family is the reason why God is blessing some of you. Did you hear what I'm saying now? I'm not talking fabuso. I'm telling you the reality. Because I am in this family is the reason why God is blessing some of you. Is the reason why God is so. If any of you try to look down on my ministry, that is the beginning of your downfall. Try it and see it. The presence of Jesus in his family make that family a critical partaker of God's purpose on the earth. Don't let it be. church, And you will now be the one to stop that boy, stop that girl, or create anything that will make him not to, not to do what he's doing. Praise God. I've seen parents make mistake, make that kind of mistake for a long time. I told you about a boy where there was a seed years ago that was raised in the church and he came out for that seed and when he, when he collected his salary, he was working in a private school. When he collected his salary and he removed that seed that he promised to come and bring to church, the mother said, Which, where are you taking the money from? Are you hearing me now? And when, they, and when they were asking for people, why didn't you bring your seed? Why didn't you bring your seed? And, all, and, all. and they asked the boy. And then he said, it's my mommy that collected it from me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And I see the woman has, except for divine mercy, the woman has completely closed the door of grace against that boy. I want all, your, I want all the women to stand up. I want you to pray. I want you to say, I won't close the door of grace against my children. <laughs> say it very well. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> I want to pray for you that you will not close the door of grace against your children. Yeah. Did you hear that? I want you to go home with that secret. I have seen that happen severally. Seen that happen severally. Okay, sit down. I want all the men to stand up. I want you to promise God again, just like the women have said, that I will not close the door of grace against my children. Say it again. I will not close the door of grace against my children. Say it again. I will not close the door of grace against my children. I want to pray for you that you will not close the door of grace against your children. Amen. Sit down. Did you get what I'm saying now? Very important. So your family must be involved in the purpose of God on the earth one way or the other. You yourself as the father and mother must connect one way or the other to what God is doing on the earth at every opportunity. And your children must connect. Are you hearing me now? Families are refreshed and serviced through the purpose of God that they are connected to. Your children will not be an instrument in the hand of I prayed that prayer for you. you. Didn't hear what I just said. Yeah. I say your children will not be an instrument in the hand of the devil. Yeah. 
So that's the first question. Where is your family involved in the purpose of God on the earth? Those of you that you are not yet married and you are looking forward to marry, let it be your marital goal. Let it be your marital pursuit. Okay? Men that are getting ready to marry, women that are getting ready to marry, set it is a goal. It's a godly goal that my family is to be involved in the purpose of God on the earth. Is that Number two, can the unlimited operations of God be seen in your family? Can the unlimited operations of God be seen in your family? Can the unlimited operations of God be seen in your family? Because God wants his operations to be seen in families. Can the unlimited operations of God be seen in your family? Whose oppression are we seeing in your family? Is it the oppression of the devil? Or the oppression of the flesh? Can the unlimited oppression of God be seen in your family? Is that okay? Is that okay? Very important. And those of you that are not married, make it your marital goal. As a brother, as a sister, that the unlimited oppressions of God will be seen in my family. I want to pray for you and every family here, online, on ground, that your family will be the ground for divine operations. Your family will not be theater of demonic operation. Your family will be the ground for divine operations. Number three, are you experiencing blessing, fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishing, dominion, and victory? Those six things I mentioned earlier on. Are you experiencing it? Are you experiencing fruitfulness? Blessing? Multiplication? Replenishing? Dominion? And victory? Are you? If you are not experiencing it, it only shows to you that something is wrong with your family setup. Find out what is wrong and correct it. Because if your family set up, is in alignment with divine purpose. You must be experiencing what? Blessing, fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishing, dominion, and victory. A family that is run with the standards of God will always experience blessing, fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishing, dominion. Is that okay? Number four. Are godly seeds being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation? Are godly seeds being raised? Are godly seeds being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation? Many of us will prefer our children to go to school than to come to church. It is a deception of the devil. They will only become a sophisticated devil. And and they will become educated demons. If the only place they go to is school and they don't come to church. Technologically compliant Satan. That's what they are going to become. Satan that can speak a lot of grammar. That will not be your children. <laughs> Beloved, the first place they should be going to is church. That is when school can really make the right impact on them. They do hear me now. Don't be the one that is more concerned about the schooling of your children than their churching. Did you hear me now? Don't be the one that is more concerned with the schooling of your children than their churching. People that are on the other side, in the other religion, I don't want to mention them. How many of you know that they are, they, they, they are so much concerned with their uh, religious center? I don't want to mention names. You know what I'm talking about. An average person on the other religion, when their children are coming up, where do you think the first place they take them to? Huh? They take them to their religious center. 
where they are going to teach them and, and indoctrinate them. And then that's when they now, it is when they have that, they now take them to school. And these days now, they are having their own school now. But we are, the Christians are the ones that, it, it, your child didn't go to church from January to December. It doesn't mean anything to you. You are paying school fees. You are wasting your money. You are raising the beast that will spoil your name tomorrow. You heard what I just said. Did you hear? Eh, 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 eh. Yorubas used to say that um, Afioma Paro Sabe and Becca. She had Mokumba Tabak Mugu and Lotto, Oma Paro Yana Luma Pada, what are shaking? I don't know what you Omo e wa church lati January si December o de ni tumo si e sugbon o sa nso wo school o nso wo school regularly o nfo wo show fun ni o eyan ko wo jona ni o aye ti koja be se ro lo are you hearing me now they will not teach them about god in the school if if your own child become soundly educated but godless is a tragedy. A lot of educated people are homosexual. A lot of educated people are cultists. Yes or no? A lot of educated people are ritualists. A lot of educated people are Indian hemp smokers and drug peddlers. A lot of educated people are armed robbers. What is missing in their life? The knowledge and the fear of God. That is what the church supply. And listen, when I say church, I mean a sound church. Not yeah, 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 demonic networks that we have in most places in the name of church today. Are you hearing me now? As a correct parent, the first thing that must be of priority to you is the spiritual education that your children have been exposed to. Did you hear me now? Before you begin to talk about the... the, the the secular education. That is when they become a complete child. That's when the future is there. If with my brain, if I am godless, Nigeria would have heard of me. I want to grow me. Are you hearing me now? Eh? Baba? Kiru wa yubo ko jekpe koke langbe pelu Education at Tigogo Mojiwai, a etic bureau. Did you hear what I'm saying now? That somebody like me will become a kidnapper. I would have kidnapped all your children. I'm telling you. Because I will find out how you are thinking. I will study about it, watch you very well. I will kidnap even you yourself. I'm telling you. That somebody like me will be a thief. Ah. Well, I become 419. Ah. Praise God. <laughs> oh, praise God. Don't let your children be highly educated and godless. You have wasted your future. You have wasted your resources. Praise God. We're talking to, I mean, my, my wife was talking to one of our people outside the country last week. And that man was telling my wife that outside there, there is no God. Though. He said, outside there, there is no what? There is no God. Though. There is no fear of God outside there. He said, so, let your children have, be very grounded in the fear of God before you send them overseas. Because many people believe it is status thing now to send children overseas. Are you hearing me now? The son that doesn't know God in Nigeria, that you are sending overseas, he will return as a beast. Because overseas, they are godless. They need God now. We are the one going to minister to them. From this place. Gone are the days when they used to come here to minister to us. We are the one going to minister to them now. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. We, we heard the story of a man of God. 
that his son finished secondary school and he sent him to school over there. And the first time that the boy would come home, he went to pick him up in the airport. And when the boy was coming out of the plane, saw his father, he said, Daddy, I have a new definition for marriage. Marriage is between man and man. Woman and woman. The father is a pastor. He put his hand on his head. He said his life is finished. That he has used his money to destroy his future. He said, boy, you are not going back again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I'm not saying you should not send your children abroad. But be sure that they have a solid grasp of God here. Before you do that. Did you hear what I just said now? Because if what is outside there is stronger than what is inside them, what is outside is going to swallow them. What is inside them must be stronger than what is outside there. Daniel prospered in Babylon because the God inside him is stronger than the goddess and the idols of Babylon. So when he got to Babylon, he said, Daniel had proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's portion. No wonder Daniel excelled in his generation. The Bible said Daniel was ten times better than others. I want to pray for you that your children will be ten times better than others. How many of you are hearing this message? Is it a good message? Or am I wasting my time? Very important. It is a wisdom. So those of you that are not married, let it be your own goal that in my family I will experience blessing, fruitfulness, multiplication, replenishing, and dominion. Number four, a godly seed being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation? That's a question. A godly seeds being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation? A godly seed being raised? Raising of godly seed is your own contribution to the next generation. Life will become terrible in the next generation if godly seed are not raised today. Did you hear me now? Your own son is going to be somebody's husband tomorrow. He's going to be somebody's father tomorrow. Don't let that somebody be sending cause to you. That you didn't raise him very well. Your own son is going to be somebody's father tomorrow. Your own son is going to be somebody's husband tomorrow. Don't let that somebody be sending cause to you that you didn't raise their father or their husband well. Did you hear me now? When we are raising godly seed today, we are contributing critically to the next generation. You are making life in the next generation better than what it is in this generation. Listen to me. How many of you have noticed that things are going down from 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s? How many of you agree with me? That values are going down. Are they going up? They are going down. Talk about it. Family values, educational values, moral values, all are going down from 60s. 60s is stronger than 70s. 70s is stronger than 80. 80 is stronger than 90. 90 is stronger than 2000. 2000 is stronger than 2010. 2010 is, is stronger than 2019. Do you know why? Families, predominantly larger number of families have been failing. And failing. And failing. That's why the world is getting worse and worse. Yes or no? Fathers are pursuing their career. Mothers are pursuing their career. They are throwing their future to chances. They are making money. They don't make the future. They are, they are getting cars. 2019 latest. But at the expense of the, of the future of their children. That's why our nation is going down and down and down and down. And the politicians have become an agent of the devil that has killed everything. I read about a politician yesterday. He said he was, he was one of the minister designate. He, was, he wanted to recruit 200,000 youth as special advisors. And he wanted to be giving them 40, 40, he, he told his aide, he said, give them 40, 40K every month. 40, 40K every month. Somebody will see that post 
and we hail him. I see that post and I curse him. Did you hear me now? I told my wife, okay, I went to the guy, I said, you see this one? You see this one now? Anybody will see this one and say, hey, he has, he's going to, he, I, I employ, he's going to appoint 200 uh, youth as special advisor. When a nation depends on politics, that nation is coming to an end. Must all our youth become politicians now? Why is he gathering 200 youth to be special? What are they specially advising on? He wants to make them to become his thug. He wants to come back in 2023 to come and unseat the governor of his state. So he's presently in the army that will be abusing the governor and writing terrible things of the governor. At the end of the day, give them a stupid money of 40,000 a month. And he can send them to go. And some of them will die for him in that process. Because of 40,000. Ah, I am your and some youth would jump with that. And they die, and they'll be hailing him. Somebody that they should beat and, and get him on the pole and get him executed publicly. For him to have thought like that, he has destroyed the future of those people. What is 40,000 to your life? And they'll be sending them to go and be arranging for talks. Sending them. He said, I told my wife, I said, can this, can this man as useless as he is, can he give this assignment to his own children? Did you hear what I'm saying now? Go and find out. His children will not be in Nigeria. And those people that are, that, that are one of the people that are selected as special advisors to collect 40,000 40, every month, they will come to church and they will be doing things. Not here, They come to church and they say, hey, I'm on to Irish, yeah. I'm not going to church. I'm going to praise God. Hallelujah. I'm on to Irish, yeah. I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church. Anybody say, I'm going to go to your enemy. Did you hear what I just said? And that's, that's the problem we're having now. So, you must, you must ensure that I'm going to raise godly seed in my family. God gave you four sons. Four sons. You don't know that that is four nations that God gave you. That is four fathers. That is four solid husbands. It's a project of your life to raise them spiritually and it is a full-time job. It's not a part-time job. Nobody can raise your children for you. You must raise them. If the church is helping, don't be the one that will be destroying what your children are learning in church by your foolishness at home. Some parents are not, some parents, in town, about to come to church, that is what some parents do. Are you hearing me now? Don't be the one that will use your attitude, your lifestyle, destroy the lessons of godliness that your children are learning in the church. Let your attitude and comportment at home, let it align with what God is using the church to do. That is when the boy or the girl will be a blessing to you, a blessing to the church, and a blessing to the world. Did you hear me now? When I'm trying to teach your children to be godly and strong and all that, and all you are saying at home, and all you are doing at home, is sending another message to them, confusing them, so they don't know which one to go to. And at a point, they see me as somebody that is bad, and they see you as somebody that is good. You are losing the battle. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You're losing the battle. It's not in many places that this understanding is clear. And that's why you see people misbehaving. That's why you see children misbehaving. 
never speak against your church in the presence of your children. When you do so, you damage their future. If you have any problem with anybody in the church, don't bring your children to it. Let it be you and that person. Is that okay? Never talk against your pastor in the presence of your children. You have shot yourself in the leg when you do so. If you have any problem with your pastor, let it be you and that pastor. Squarely. Don't bring your children into it. Because by the time you are through with that problem and you and your pastor set to that issue, the boy has a wrong picture in his spirit. And he has a low estimation for the anointing. And the anointing that is going to help him tomorrow, he will begin to despise it today. And you are going to lose him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We used to pastor some, I mean, a woman sometimes. It was here she told myself, and mommy, mommy, you remember? When she was regretting about what her daughter turned out to be. She said, it is her fault. It was here, she was telling us. You remember that day? That lady was following God, following God, following God, following God, following the teachings, following the teachings and all that. The lady doesn't know how to do fashion. I mean crazy fashion and sinful fashion. That's what I'm talking about. Are you hearing me now? The lady is just, you know, following God, following God and following God. And this woman thought that I wanted to collect her daughter. Ah, rise up on your feet. Let me pray for you. Anything that makes you think that your pastor is going to collect your daughter, I take authority over that thought. I bind that demon. And I send that demon out of your life. When you begin to think like that, it is time to say, get thee behind me, Satan. Because the devil is after your life. And it's after your future. Are you hearing me now? Don't ever think that a pastor is taking your children. I tell some parents, I said, you should come, you should be thanking me every day. But most of you are, waiting, are fighting me every day. I told some parents that. Not you. I'm just doing my teaching. I told somebody, I said, you should be oh, shele, yako, yama, dupe, lo, wom, lo, jo, juma, but omba, mida, lo, jo, juma, ni. So, um, ton, she, what I'm giving to your children, can you offer them? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now? And I pray over this congregation again and again, that anything that will, every thought that comes into your mind, maybe daddy or mommy is taking your children, Bind that thought. And I cast that thought out. Amen. Sit down. Did you get that? Because I fought that serious battles. In that line. I fought serious battles. And it pains me most of the time. Not for the parent directly. But sometimes for what the children turn out to become. Are you hearing me now? Somebody was telling us last week that this person, this person, this person, up till today, when they talk in their house, she will tell their parents that that is not how daddy taught us. That is not how daddy taught us. That is not what daddy said we should do. That is not the Bible. That is not how daddy taught us. Are you hearing me now? And I say, why did he leave that daddy? Why did he leave that word of God? He says, it's my father and mother that say we should leave the place. Up till today, they've left the church now more than five years now. But yet, what daddy taught us is still the standard reference. Up till today, who is their God-given pastor? Talk to me. Talk to me. Uh -uh. If they have gone to a place that is better, they would have replaced it. It shows that in the last five years, they have not connected to the word of God. Can I tell you something? If you have any problem with me, come, we are adults. We can do what? We can talk, we can sort it out. Don't let us extend it to the young ones. Oh. You will be the greater loser. Oh. 
If you don't like the way I preach, come to me and say, Daddy, I don't like the way you I will explain why I did so. If I have to say sorry, I will say sorry. If I don't have to say sorry, I will tell you why I will not say sorry. And it will end with us. And we will continue. But don't let us send it to these children. I am not going to lose. You are the one that will lose. But it is not my joy that you lose. Beloved, there is a way pastors speak and preach to the church. You will know that this is our pastor. But there is a way pastor will speak to the church. You will know that this is our father. Father's words are different from pastor's words. I'm sharing it with you from the heart of a father. Not just a pastor. Are you hearing me now? So God, when God gave you, and that lady, that lady that we're talking about was just following God, following God, following God, following God. And the mother was the one that used to taunt her. Uh -uh. What is wrong with you? After all, I'm the one that took you to that church. Uh -uh. What's wrong with you? Is it daddy that says you should not do this? Is it mommy that says you should not do this? And they begin to taunt the girl, ta taunt her, taunt her, taunt her. And some foolish people that were together in the church that time too, were joining her to taunt the girl. These other people that were taunt, joining the woman to taunt her girl, their own children have become wayward. As at that time, their son is taking, is, is, is smoking in their head. And their daughter has no respect for God and the things of the anointing. Are you hearing me now? And the two of them, father and, and, and mother, are the one gossiping about the church and talking about pastor and all that. They are now joining this woman now. Together to taunt the girl. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I'm not telling you what I read in books. I'm telling you what I have seen happen. This is my 25 years of pastoring. I'm not a rookie pastor. And they began to taunt the girl. After some time, the girl became... You know there is a level of maturity that, that a girl can have to resist things and all that. And before you know it... Ah. Ah. I don't know the English I can use. I say, and then the woman were here when she came and she sat down with us here and she said it is my fault I am the one that used to taunt her I want to pray for you you will not destroy your life by your hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. If they have left that lady, huh, the story will be different today. It is better for you, for your children, for your, especially your, your daughters, for them, for, for people to say they don't understand passion. Oh, leave it that way. Let them grow in the Lord. By the time they become mature in the Lord, they will understand godly fashion. Than for them to say they understand fashion when they don't know God. It will be godless fashion they are going to be pushing for. Are we still together? Let, let it be a, 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 a goal that God give you four girls. Oh, four girls. <laughs> you are talking about mothers of generations. Mothers of vision. Mothers of callings. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Mothers of callings. Mothers of visions. Real good wives. That's, that is, you should raise them to become like that. So that they can rise up tomorrow and bless your memory. And say, we well, thank God for our dad. Thank God for our mother. When your children look back, let them be able to say, we well, thank God for our dad. Thank God for our mother. You do get what I'm saying now? Let them be able to say that. Ah, we thank God for our dad. Thank God for our mother. Right? So, number four question is, a godly seed being raised and perpetuated from generation to generation? And then number five, what are you passing down to the next generation? That's where I'm going to stop this first message. What are you passing down to the next generation? Every father,
every mother here, you must be conscious of what you are passing down to the next generation. Your reaction in their presence is a seed. Your words, your honor for God, your love for the things of God, your love for discipline, is a seed. A seed. They are the things you are passing down to the next generation. Is that okay? What are you passing down to the next generation? I want you to list these 10 things under that question number 5. Number 1. Is it wisdom or foolishness? Is it wisdom or foolishness? When something happened between you and your wife and you came and you come from office or you come from town and something happened between you and your wife and the woman set table for you and the children put the, you know when children are getting older they assist their mother am i correct am i correct maybe they brought they know that daddy's food is on the table and they brought water to wash your hand to drink and all that and then you refuse to eat that food number one you have told them that something is wrong when you begin to reject the food of their mother you are telling them that their mother has no place in your life it is a symbolic rejection. If I am a woman, I will not allow a man that rejects my food to sleep with me in the night. It is, a, it is stupidity upon stupidity. If he, if he rejects my food, I won't allow him to touch me in the night. Good men don't reject the food of their, of their wife. No matter what. It is immature men that does that. I will never reject the food of my wife. I have never rejected the food of my wife. I will never reject it. Doesn't mean that we don't have issues to sort out sometimes. But I will eat my food. Did you hear me now? One of the ministry of your wife in your life is to prepare your food. That's her ministry. When you reject her, you reject her food, you are rejecting her ministry in your life. And you are turning her children to become bullies. And the children saw. Breakfast, you rejected it. Lunch, you rejected it. Evening, you rejected it. And you keep rejecting for one week. Even if you later settle the issue, you have sown a wrong seed into their lives. And some of them, especially the boys, may never recover from it. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? May never recover from it. I prefer the food of my wife that is salty than a canteen food. I prefer the food of my wife that is pepperish than a canteen food. Because food is a critical part of marriage. Just like sex is a critical part of marriage. If a man loves to sleep with you, but he doesn't like to eat your food. The two of you are foolish. You don't understand the rituals of marriage. Are you hearing me now? The man that doesn't eat your food doesn't like you. You are not in his heart. Today, not today. Abi? Ah, today, not today. Because these are critical educations that people must learn about marriage. You know? so that somebody is 50 years doesn't mean that he's qualified to marry. Or that he's matured enough to marry. The reason why marriage is collapsing today is because people don't read the word of God to understand the view of God about marriage. A woman that cannot prepare good food for her husband is a colossal failure. In fact, she has no place in that family. Even if she is bearing children every month. Listen to me. Don't laugh. Oh. Some of you women don't know how to prepare good food for your husband. Especially women. If your husband is complaining about your food every time, we should review your womanhood.
it is an indictment against your bringing. O two months you pay O T O O ba when you cock on. You get what I'm saying now. Your husband must be able to come back home expecting dish, good food. I'm not talking of husband that don't give money. One day, at least Gio, so you pay. You must come back to expect you are a thief. But I'm talking of men that are responsible, you know. You get what I'm saying now? The woman must be able to maximize the resources the husband has given her and turn it to a good food. Turn it to a good food. One of my big aunts that I we've seen last for some time now. So we got on, we got talking on, on WhatsApp. I just said a message. And she said, What is this your is this your is this you? Your DP? Is it this picture of you? What they call is it DP picture? Is it is that you? I said yes. He said, Ah, my aburo has become horrible. Ah, greet Reverend Mrs. for me. And then she said another message. She said, Have you delivered my message? I said, I have already delivered it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because he knew how I was then. I was not married. Oh. Allah bell, Allah ko. Toba kouton o kool Allah mone. Kini mo kouton. Allah mo lo lo kou oko. Allah bell, Allah aye oko. Did you hear me? Eh, I have eight children for him. I have but you can't cook for him. So every woman must sit up. Some of you women don't allow a strange woman to be cooking for your husband. If you have to go and get more critical education, go and get it. If you have to go and learn how to cook food, ask him. What does he love? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And cook for him what he likes. Did you get what I'm saying now? When a man is coming home, he should take it for granted that he's going home to meet a good food. When your husband is meeting good food in the house, he will have no reason to eat outside for one day. He won't eat outside. But when he knows that the one is coming to eat is a wash up, what you call food is a poison to his system. He will satisfy himself outside. Fuck off. Thank you, cause, uh, Did you hear what I just said? How many of you understand this teaching? Mm. If I say I will never reject the food of my wife, the food is good. That's why I didn't reject it. If the food is always bad every day, I, won't, I don't like anybody that will kill me before my time. It's because the food is good. Why do you re why would you reject a good food? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So you, sh you should go and learn how to cook good food. And all that. What did I get to that point? What are you passing down to the next generation? Number one, is it wisdom or foolishness? Number two, is it wealth or poverty? Is it wealth or poverty? Number three, is it blessing or cost? Is it blessing or cause? Every one of us, fathers, mothers, we should intentionally pass blessing across to the next generation. Number four, is it the fear of God or rebellion against God? Is it the fear of God or rebellion against God? Is it the fear of God or rebellion against God? What are you passing down to the next generation? You must pass down the fear of God to the next generation. Number next, is it divine encounters or demonic oppression? Is it divine encounters or demonic oppression? What are you talking to this generation? Divine encounters or demonic oppression? Right? So you must begin to pass down divine encounters. You read the place in the scripture, you got the revelation. Share it with your wife. 
share it with your children. All the books I am writing, my children know all of them. My children know all the books I'm writing. When they return from me, I say, you know, I'm writing this one now. I'm writing this book now. I will preview it for them. Hello? Because the books I'm writing are my revelations. When they return from me, I say, you know, come and see. I first see this one. Or I see this one. You know, see this one. I'm just writing this book now, okay? This is what the book is about. This is, this is the point I'm dealing with. This is the point I'm dealing with. So I will give them overview of the book. And, and several other books that we have not published, that I've already written, I've showed them. This is how, this is how I am not a stupid father. Passing down divine encounters. It is intentional. Is somebody hearing me now? When I read anything in the scripture, when, when I'm reading, and my children hear me saying, mm, ah, they know that daddy is getting something. And mommy too know that, ah, that is Sometimes I listen, I will speak in tongues aloud. Zebaliste de Mazadaya. My wife will not say she will see you. <laughs> she knows that I'm getting something. Alright? And I will go down to the kitchen and say, you know, this is what I just got now. Let me share this with you. Or sometimes I say, let me read this to you. Let me read this to you. I'm simply passing down divine encounters. They are partaker, they are supposed to be the first partaker of that flow. That's a wise man. Are you hearing me now? I won't say okay until I get to church before I share it. Mm -mm. They are supposed to be the first particular. You do hear what I'm saying now? Huh? Yo, you need your need your Go shake Come to That's how you deal with your family. Because good things don't just happen. There are processes to it. And I'm teaching you the processes now. Okay? So, is it divine encounters or demonic oppression? What story are you telling your children? Are you Leo? Are you Leo? Ah, are you a ye ye ye? Are you a Tamoti ye? Are you a woman who can talk to you? Are you a woman who can talk to you? Are you a woman who can talk to you? Is that what you are telling your children? You are forming a demonic future for them? You are giving them a demonic impression that the devil is powerful than God. You are telling them indirectly that you yourself, you have been only a failure in God. And that that's what you are saying. Number next. What are you passing down to the next generation? Is it possibilities in God? Or the impossibilities in the world? Is it possibilities in God or the impossibilities in the world? Number next, is it the truth of God or the lies of men? What are you passing down to the next generation? Is it the truth of God or the lies of men? Number next, is it the revelations of God or the traditions of men? What are you passing down to the next generation? Is it the revelations of God or the traditions of men? This should be number nine. Am I correct? The next one should be number nine. Am I correct? Hmm. What are you passing down to the next generation? Is it the spirit of discipline, diligence, and integrity? Or the spirit of frivolity, indulgence, and unfaithfulness? What are you passing down to the next generation? Is it the spirit of discipline? <clears throat> discipline, diligence, and integrity? Or the spirit of frivolity, indulgence, and unfaithfulness? Is that what you are passing down to your children? Praise God. Oh. Are we still together? And finally, what are you passing down to the next generation? Is it faith in God or empty dependence on men? Is it faith in God or empty dependence on men? 
every father and mother must conduct themselves before their children to know that they depend in God, on God and not on men. Let your children see that you have faith in God. The first thing you should teach your children is a lesson of faith. Is that okay? Don't let them develop depending on men from you. No. Don't depend on men. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Teach your children to appreciate divine provision at any time. If it is white rice that you cook like jollof, that God provide, let your children learn to appreciate divine provision. That is what God has provided for us. And what God provides for you is what is going to help your body to grow. The thing that God is not providing that you are looking at and you are coveting is the thing that will give you this, this entry. Did you hear? If it is Gary, that God provide, it is that Gary that will do your body good for that season. Did you hear me now? The fish that God is not providing that time will give you diarrhea. How many of you agree with me that none of the children of Israel that were eating manna in the wilderness for 40 years had sickness? Answer me now. Did they have sickness? Did you hear that the children of Israel were sick in the wilderness? Why? One of the secrets of their divine health in the wilderness is because they were satisfied with divine diet. If it is Gary that God provides, for a season. Appreciate it and stop complaining. And stop telling your husband, don't you see what your, what your mates are doing? Either a man comparing his wife with another person or a woman comparing her husband with another person, it is foolishness to compare yourself with any other person. If it is Gary that God provides for us at a point, that is what we need. That is what is going to help our body to grow that time. Did you hear me now? I'm not talking as a scientist. I'm talking as a preacher of the word of God. That is what is going to help your body to grow that time. If you are looking for the fish that God didn't provide that time, that's what is going to give you diarrhea. That's what, because God is not providing it that time. Be, be satisfied with what God is providing that time. That's what you need for your body. Don't let anybody intimidate you for anything. And the day that God provides chicken, Oh, eat it very well without any apology. That is what God is providing that day. It's going to strengthen your body. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't look for what God is not giving you. Raise your children to believe in, 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 in contentment and godliness. That they won't, they, 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 won't, they, won't, they won't be drinking garlic in the house and go out to another place and see another person eating pandemonium and all that and they, will be, and they will be looking forward to eat that one. Even if they call them, come and eat this one. Let them be strong enough to say, we are okay. We have eaten. You will not eat the food of your enemy. Your children will not eat the food of your enemy. Go and find out if you are eating the food that God provides for you every time, you won't spend money on sickness or going to the hospital. Did you hear me? When I was raising my children, I was doing my master's in Futa then. And I discovered part of one of my research that I did. I discovered a food formulation. Are you hearing me now? A food formulation. We have, uh, 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 we have maize. We have millet. We have soya beans. We have dry fish. Crayfish. Right? We will roast them separately. Okay, the maize separately, the millet separately, the soya bean, you know, crayfish, and then the fish. And then we bring them together and grind it together to powder. And then we prepare it. We call it Tom Brown. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Okay, if you like, you can add sugar to taste. That was what I fed all my children with. 
and come and see them. That's what I fed them with. We we'll grind it. We will sterilize different things and we will not package it in things. It wasn't poverty that did that happened to me that I was a divine revelation. So instead of going to buy serilac, going to buy serilac that will give them uh, diarrhea, and I will go to hospital again and spend money on that, going to buy this, going to buy that. You get what I'm saying now? That formulation was what we developed. I, I think mommy has given it to some other people later in the church and all that. And even outside the church. Are you hearing me now? That's what they all took. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And sometimes even adult too try to eat out of their food too. It's good. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a formulation. Praise God. Rashel, eh? you are hearing me. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, come and see. They are very strong and strong. The first thing is that the first six months, exclusive. Exclusive breastfeeding. First six months. Bam. And my children can suck. Oh, Lord God of mercy. And they are very strong. I don't take them to hospital. The first time they were going to give Ayofe injection, he doesn't even know what it is. The doctor was doing the syringe in the hospital. He didn't know what it is. They were just giving, they told him to drink Fanta. He drank Fanta. And then he didn't know what it is. Are you hearing me now? Or did I carry him? And then he, and then he cried. <laughs> from that time, when he see Jesus, he run away from the back. <laughs> ah, no, no, no. <laughs> you get what I'm saying now? Amen. Amen. Now, if I had gone for Serilac or this or that, whatever, I would have spent a lot of money and it may not have really considerably helped their health. Because when we did proximate analysis of what I just told you, it's richer in, in, in quality, especially... Uh, essential nutrients and essential amino acids more than serilac because we did a comparative studies of Tom Brown with serilac. We discovered that Tom Brown is better than serilac, better than none or whatever. What do you call again? I don't know the name again. Praise God. It's better in terms of the, 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 the number one, even organoleptic qualities. Okay? Even the nutrient, the nutrient content is better. Much, much better than that. Did you get what I'm saying now? Praise God. So, and I saw the reason why Daniel said, don't give us the king's portion. Give us beans and water. And the man said, you want to kill me? He said, just try us ten days. Let, us, let them be eating the king's portion. Let us be taking beans and water. The end of ten days, come and see how we appear. And ten days after, when they brought them together. The Bible said Daniel and his friends were ten times better than others. When God shows you a divine diet, he has given you the secret of divine health. Write it down, don't ever forget it. When God gave me that diet, it was saving me from hospitals because he wouldn't want me to go and be spending special time over my children in the hospital. That's why he gave me that diet. So when God gives you a divine diet, he has given you the secret of divine health. Because what you eat determines greatly your health. Did you get what I'm saying, beloved? Oh, wow. So faith in God. Or let me read three scriptures, um, two scriptures, and then we'll round up this first teaching. And this is first teaching. We used to wait for the second teaching. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Look at Psalm 78. I want you to bring it on the screen. I want all of us to follow this Psalm 78 from verse 1 to 7. Psalm 78. When you get home, I want you to study this place very well and ask yourself, as I live my life as a father, as I live my life as a mother, what exactly am I passing down to the next generation? Because we will not be here forever. Is that okay? What we teach our children now, directly or indirectly, is what will become the reality in their own generation. So let us be mindful of what we do now. All right? So let's have, let's have Psalm 78. 78, please. From verse 1 to 7. 
I want everybody to look at the screen. I want us to read. If you can't see the screen, you can get, you can get your own note, uh, your own Bible. And uh, let's read together. 78, please. Are you there? Now look at verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Somebody say dark sayings of old. Now when you say dark, it's not talking about darkness literally. It's talking about wisdom that are hidden. Wisdom that are not common. Did you hear me now? Most children go to school today. They have A1 in everything, but they are foolish. They are foolish children. They have good education, but their life is devoid of secret wisdom. That somebody is educated doesn't mean he's wise. Hello? That somebody is educated doesn't mean he's wise. How many of you know that most educated people are foolish people? Have you heard when they say it is book you have read? You have not read your, your, your you have not read wisdom. How many of you have heard that before? Okay? That's a professor. Doesn't mean he's intelligent or that he's a wise man. They don't teach wisdom in school. You are the one that will pass wisdom to your children. The wisdom, the dark saying of old. Somebody said dark saying of old. That's talking about the secret wisdom. Things that are not common. Things you can't find in the university. Things that they will be able to say, this is what my father said. This is what mommy said. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's the dark sayings of old. Look at verse 3. You will see the source of dark sayings now. The, dark of, the, the source of that secret wisdom. Now, verse 3. What is it say? Which we have heard and what? And known. How? And our fathers have told us. Is that in your Bible? A silent father is a tragedy of a man. You must be able to pass down dark sayings to your children. That is what is going to give them edge over others in life. The wisdom they hear from you, which is more than their age, will give them an opportunity to edge other people out. When a small boy is talking solid word, you will know that his father has been doing a good job. Hello, somebody. Listen to me. When any of you as member go out and preach somewhere else and you preach better than pastors in that place, you should come back and thank me. I've done a good job. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Which we have had and known and our fathers have told us, not school, not that they taught us in school. Our fathers have told us. Fathers here. Answer me if you are a father. Fathers here. What are you telling your children? What are you telling your wife? I believe there is a communication gap between Adam and Eve. That is why the devil took Eve out. How many of you know that the devil is a smart guy? Hello? Who did God give the primary instruction of the garden to? Who did God give it to? Adam. God did not come back and repeat the same thing to the woman. God expect Adam to communicate what he had told him to his wife. How many of you know that if the devil would have come to Adam, he would have failed? Because it was Adam that had the original information. So the devil did not come to Adam. He went to the other woman. But Adam, I suppose, has not passed down the heaviness of that instruction to the woman. Every man is supposed to be a teacher to his wife. And women too should be ready to learn from a wise man. Did you hear me now? When your husband is wise, it is, it is a treasure to you. It's a treasure to you. Listen to his wisdom. And learn. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Praise God. And so the devil came to talk to the woman that was not a direct recipient of that instruction. And before you know it, Nobody knows. Maybe when he's communicating it or there is, a, there is a dilution of the weight of that instruction. 
And then when the woman misbehaved, it became a national problem. Verse 4. Are we still together? Verse 4. We will not... Did you hear this? Did you see this? Is it your Bible? We will not hide them from their children. Showing to the generation to come. What are we going to show the generation to come? Is it Facebook? That we're going to show them? Is it fashion? Naked dressing? Is that what we're going to show the generation to come? Showing the generation to come. The what? The praises of the Lord. And his what? His strength. And what? And his wonderful works that he had done. Oh, that's how to build the next generation. Verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he what? Commanded our that what? That they should make them what? Known to their children. Look at verse 6. Verse 6. We're going to 7. Verse 6. Hello, maybe I will even read it from, from him here. Verse 6. All right. That the generation to come, my what? My know them. If you don't tell them, they won't know them. Did you hear me now? My know them. Even the children which will be what? Born. Even the children which will be born. We should be born. We should be born. We should be born. That's talking about the one that are still coming. And the one that are presently in the womb. They should know. Who should arise and declare them to their children? Because when you teach your children, they themselves will arise and do what? And teach the same thing. There is nothing anybody knows that he has not heard from somebody. Did you hear me now? You hear from somebody, you pass it to somebody, that person also passes it to somebody, and then we have a generational communication of the knowledge and fear of God. May that be our revelation today. Amen. Listen to me. If in this year, family redemption, I do not have service, this is what you got, I'm okay with it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Verse 7, that they might set their hope in God. That is the goal. That's the goal. Are your children, when you pass these things down to them, they will set their goal in God. That they might set their goal in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandment. But keep his commandment. Look at Psalm 44. I'm going to read from verse 1. Psalm 44. I want everybody to open his Bible now. Psalm 44 from verse 1. Down to verse 8. Mm. Are we still together? Psalm 44, verse 1. We have heard with our ears. Oh God, our fathers have told us. Did you hear that? Who told them? Who told them? Our fathers have told us. What work thou didst in their days, in the times of old? How can somebody go into the future when he doesn't understand what happened in the past? Verse 2. How thou didst drive out the Eden with thy hand and plantest them. How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance. Because thou hast a favor unto them, thou art my king. O Lord, command deliverances for Jacob. Through thee will we push down our enemies. Through thy name will we tread them under the rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. 
but thou has saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all day long and praise thy name forever. So you see, it is what they hear from their fathers that is forming their own reality for today. I want to pray for you that you will not fail your children. You will not fail the next generation. And those of you that are getting married, God is giving you a very solid foundation. And those of you that are still very young in marriage, God is giving you a very strong, solid foundation of, of solid home. Nobody in this church has a reason to produce a, a, failure, a, a failed home. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Alright? Because these are anointed truth and word and heritage that would make your home very strong. A strong home is very important for the future. Did you hear that now? I want you to rise up on your feet. Praise God. Somebody is asking, are we still going to take the second message? Praise God. I'll take it somehow, but I'm not going to take the whole of it. I want to share three things before, but I'll share only one thing. The second message. You know why? I would have loved you to go, but you know why? Because there are things that I am mandated by God to say in 2019 family redemption and renewal service. If I didn't say what I have said and this other one that I was still say, it wouldn't have worth it. You do hear me now. Many of you see the reason why it is not three days now. Why it is now eight days. And that's how we are going to be doing year after year. Family redemption and renewal service will be eight days on the earth. Real full attention to family issue. Are you hearing me now? And it is once in a year. It doesn't mean that we can't teach on family and all that. You know we have every third Sunday of the month we have our corpus fellowship. And we talk about family stuff there. But this one is a, an annual move of God. I expect that you'll get ready for that of next year. How many of you agree with me that I should say everything that God wants me to say? Do you agree? Sure? Do you agree? Okay. The next message, there are three things I want to share, but I will share only one. Because that one must be said as we go today. It is well with you. In Jesus' name. What should I do? Should I just flow into it? Or you know, we have not done worship. Oh. We have not done all the other things. We are coming to do all that. So. The Holy Ghost has his own arrangement for service. Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost has his own what? Arrangement. Forget about what we have written down and how we used to do it. Sometimes the Holy Ghost will come and disrupt our own program. Okay? Abikama praise worship. We are still going to do that. Okay? We are going to take communion and all that. But I will just cheer you message now and pray for you and then I'll flow into the second message and then we'll be true with that. Amen. 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 There is this song that came to my spirit when I walked into this place in the morning. Um, my, our revelation will change. That our life and conduct and our view of family will line up with divine revelation. Will be a great partner of God in the preservation of God's purpose from generation to generation. The family will not be a theater of demonic operations. It will be a ground for divine operations. A family as from today will be heaven on earth. And Lord, I pray that every truth that has come gone forth will work miracle in the heart of men and women. Whatever you are correcting, Lord, I ask that you will, your people will receive the air to hear and they will receive the challenge to correct what they need to correct. Every family that is wrongly situated in the context of the truth revealed, I ask that as from today there shall be deliverance. Our passion will line up with divine purpose. 
Let this word come to us again like never before. Bringing to us the mind of God. And helping us become what God wants us to become. That we will go and see beyond the flesh. We will see the mysteries of the spirit. We will be a workman with God. In building a generation that will raise the glory of God on the earth. Thank you, Father. Let the anointing of this truth rest upon everyone. The one we have heard and the one we are going to hear now, let the anointing of the truth let rest upon every one of us. Let this truth be justified in our manifestations. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.